many regulatory developments supporting the transition of the chemicals industry in Europe and beyond are coming from Brussels. In December 2023, the Commission published the so-called One Substance, One Assessment Package, consisting of three legislative proposals. Let's connect with Peter Corritar from the European Commission DG Environment and learn more about this initiative. Hi Peter. Hi Gerrit. Good to see you again. Peter, can you tell us what the One Substance, One Assessment initiative adds to the already existing legal framework and explain why it is so important? Sure, happy to do so. In order to ensure high level of protection of human health and the environment, the EU legal framework on chemicals is comprehensive. It consists of more than 100 pieces of legislation covering production and use of chemicals, emission of chemicals, worker protection, safety of consumer products, safety of food, feed, drinking water, and of course, safety of the environment. The framework works well in achieving its objective, but there are some shortcomings in terms of efficiency and coherence of safety assessment. So, the One Substance, One Assessment initiative aims to address these shortcomings and make sure that all pieces of legislation work next to each other smoothly and efficiently and the regulatory outcomes are coherent. The initiative aims to achieve this by making sure that assessments are synchronized, that there is a clear allocation of responsibilities for assessments among the relevant players and there is a good cooperation among these players. The data used for assessments are easily accessible and reusable, so we have a common database for all the assessments. That methodologies used for assessments are coherent and the transparency rules across the legislation are coherent too. So what is the One Substance, One Assessment package proposing in order to achieve those objectives? Well, the package finalizes consolidation of the scientific and technical work on chemicals in the EU agencies, which has been ongoing since 2020 as part of individual proposals. So the package amends in this regard three remaining pieces of legislation to finalize this consolidation. The package further improves cooperation among the agencies. It gives obligation to the EU agencies to cooperate on data exchange, on methodologies and on opinion making. The proposal then establishes the common data platform on chemicals that is to be the one-stop shop for all data on information on chemicals held by the EU institutions, whether it is the Commission or the EU agencies. The package further establishes the monitoring and outlook framework on chemicals to shorten the regulatory response to potential risks. The proposal also allow ECA to commission studies on chemicals to complement, where necessary, the existing data requirements. And finally, the package ensures transparency as regards the studies on chemicals performed by industry. It will require industry to notify the studies before they are performed. Having all data and information on chemicals at one place looks great. Can you tell us more? What data and information will there be? And who will be able to access the data? The Common Data Platform on Chemicals will contain all data and information held by the EU institution. That means the data held by the Commission and by our agencies, the European Chemical Agency, the European Food Safety Authority, the European Environment Agency, the European Medicine Agency and the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work. The platform will contain typical chemical data such as on physical chemical properties, hazard data, occurrence data, emission data, use data and exposure data. It will also contain all reference values, whether they are regulatory ones such as occupational exposure limits values or maximum residue levels or scientific ones such as DNL or PNX divided by the assessment committees. The platform will further contain information on legal obligations so everybody can easily find out what obligations are applicable to a chemical. Finally, the platform will contain information on planned and ongoing regulatory processes so everybody can know what processes are ongoing for a certain chemical. You're also mentioning a monitoring and outlook framework. How will that function? Well, the monitoring and outlook framework will consist of three pillars. First, we will have a framework of indicators that will monitor the progress in achieving the policy objectives. For example, it will show how the emissions were reduced as a consequence of regulatory measures or how many chemicals got harmonized classification. Second, 
we will have an early warning and action system to reduce the time necessary between the first signals of potential risk and the necessary regulatory measures. The European Environment Agency will regularly compile all, all early warning signals for consideration by the regulatory authorities to ensure early action if necessary. And third, we will have an observatory for specific chemicals identified as potential contributors to new and emerging chemical risks, so we can keep an eye on their potential risk. Typical example is an observatory of nanomaterials. Who will benefit from the One Substance One Assessment approach and what are its biggest benefits? Nice thing about the One Substance One Assessment approach is that everybody will benefit from it. People and the environment will benefit from better protection from dangerous chemicals as a result of more efficient and effective assessment and regulatory processes. Companies will benefit from more harmonized and transparent processes across legislation, as well as from strength and certainty regarding the validity of assessments. And finally, the national and EU authorities will benefit from improved efficiency of delivery of assessments and improved public trust and acceptance of regulatory decisions. The proposal seems to be very tailored to the EU regulatory system. Do you think the one substance one assessment approach could be relevant also to other jurisdictions or even to the international level? Yes, the legal proposals are clearly tailored to the EU legal framework. But the one substance one assessment approach and its objectives are relevant both to other jurisdictions and to the international level. Also, other jurisdictions have regulatory and assessment silos. Typical examples of such silos are between industrial chemicals, food and feed, medicinal products and the environment. The one substance one assessment approach is all about breaking silos for better and more efficient assessments. At the international level, it is the same. And to some extent, the one substance one assessment approach is already being promoted at the international level. A good example is the OECD work on chemicals, where we harmonize the methodologies to ensure mutual acceptance of data, and we harmonize data formats to enable easy exchange of data across different countries. Peter, thank you for your comprehensive update. I'm sure that both authority and industry stakeholders are keen to interact with Peter and further discuss the One Substance, One Assessment approach during ChemCon Asia 2024 in Bangkok. <laughs>